Hello, and welcome back to the Auto Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Isaiah, and we now have another automaker who now has access to Tesla's supercharging network. That being, well, Nissan. Finally, December 10th, all Nissan Aria owners will now have access to Tesla's supercharging network in North America. Now, I say specifically the Nissan Aria because unfortunately, the Nissan Leaf will not get access to Tesla's supercharging network. Currently, they're not able to, even with the mobile dock connections that Nissan currently, uh, Tesla currently has. Primarily, this has to do with the protocol that Chatmo uses. Um, I also believe the Nissan would need a hardware and software change and it would probably not make sense for the you know Nissan Leaf, which peaks at 50 kilowatts, to have access to the Tesla Supercharger network. But for Aria owners, this is super exciting news. Now, I think one of the best things about the Aria compared to a lot of the other EV vehicles is that its charging port is in the compatible location for the Tesla Supercharger network. So the Aria's charge port is in the front right, which means it can pull into Tesla supercharging networks without blocking a second stall. Now we can talk about the perfect placement for you know the the charge port. I personally think it's the driver's side front. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But it is compatible with a Tesla supercharging network so you can pull in. You don't have to worry about blocking another stall and it makes charging a lot simpler. You don't have to feel as bad when you're charging. Now I think one of the most interesting things and something I want to talk about here, because right, we know automakers are now getting access to Tesla supercharging network. Nothing is really spectacular about that, right? New automakers, but something specific about Nissan that I thought was pretty interesting is this new kit that they're selling. So Nissan says under for warranty, you're only allowed to use the Tesla approved adapter that you can get directly from Nissan. So you're only supposed to get it from Nissan. That's how it is. Imagine, God forbid, something would happen at the Tesla supercharging network and they found that you use a third party adapter or you didn't use the Nissan given adapter, right? Even if it's the same Tesla adapter, you didn't give the Nissan one and they're like, hey, it's out of warranty. Now, I think the reason for this is because, well, Nissan is selling a kit which doesn't include just the adapter. It includes a tiny little plastic piece which has this fancy label. On it. And what is this plastic piece? You'll see it on the screen here. I couldn't figure out what it was at first. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. But after doing some more research, con uh, asking some other ARIA owners, I believe it has to do with securing the alignment of the NAX adapter. So when you look at the Nissan ARIA charge port, and I'm talking about this little plastic piece here, you see this pin, this like plastic long piece, that piece goes in between the cavity of the two DC pins on the CCS1 port of the Nissan Aria. And you can see the Nissan Aria's CCS1 port. Actually, compared to a lot of other electric vehicles, that cavity is filled. It's filled with plastic. There's, there's no cavity in between. It's filled. And I imagine Tesla maybe was worried about the alignment of the adapter, right? Maybe these, these pins would allow too much movement. Maybe Nissan thought this was secure, but Tesla wants to be extra safe. And so they said, hey, we want to be able to fill that cavity. And so in Nissan's kit that they're selling for $235 on their website, or you can get it at Nissan dealers, you have to put this cavity in to be able to use this adapter. Now, the Aria has like a peak amperage of like 325 amps. So with the 500 amp limit of the NAX adapter, this, the Nissan Aria, which also peaks at 130 kilowatts, has a pretty awesome curve. It's going to work awesome for the Tesla's supercharging network. It's great to see that other automakers are getting access to Tesla's supercharging network. And of course, more of these adapters are going out. I am a Rivian R1T owner. I actually just got the email to get my Rivian adapter to approve shipping just the day before yesterday. I did that. And now almost all Rivian owners should have their adapters by January. For Ford owners, I think most of them actually already have it. So this rollout is happening super fast. And soon a lot of other vehicles, a lot of other automakers will get their adapters and you'll see it here. We'll report it right here on the Auto Spec podcast channel. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments with the Leaf not getting access to the Tesla supercharging network. I mean, honestly, I think that's a wise decision given how Chatmo and the protocol that 
Chatamo uses, it, it might make for some complications, but I imagine there are probably some Nissan Leaf owners who would be willing to upgrade and pay to be able to use Tesla's supercharging network. Um, also, I'm curious to know what you guys think about other automakers now being able to use Tesla supercharging network. I'm actually surprised that there are quite a few people who don't want people, other vehicles, non-Tesla vehicles, to have access to Tesla supercharging network until they have a NAX port. They don't want anything to do with adapters, although whether it's an adapter or the actual port itself, the functionality is the same. The charging rates are going to be the same. So and not much changes there, but I'm curious to know what you guys think about this. I know for Nissan Ari owners, this is a great moment. So December 10th, you guys will have access to Tesla's supercharging network. I think another cool part of this, which is news that just made around today, the federal government has now granted uh, the SAE International, the J3400 port, they've recognized it as a federal port. A port, And I think this means coming in the future, December 17th, we're going to hear more news about this, that the federal government may say that the J3400 port will be the standard port. It will replace CCS as the standard port. And now to get government funding, specifically, right, we have the Inflation Reduction Act, um, Right, the federal sponsorship of adding EV infrastructure to get some of the benefits, to get the credits for this, that might mean they'll have to install the J3400 ports, which actually a lot of public infrastructure sites are already doing. IANA is already installing J3400 ports. That's the next Tesla supercharging port at their sites. ChargePoint is already doing this. Alpatronic is also doing this, Alpatronic um, dispensers. And so, that is a decent site. It seems that the world is moving quite fast to J3400 NAX. I personally think it's a way better form and functionality of a charging port. I think that giant CCS cable, having to plug that into my ravine is uh, sometimes I have to use two hands just to make sure it's in there stable. And I, I just don't like that feeling. And so, you know, I know Tesla owners, they already know it. You just take the port, you plug it in your car and you're super duper happy. But the Nissan Aria now getting access. Um, and for Nissan Aria owners in 2025 into 2026, Nissan will be introducing the native NAX port. And I imagine it will be in the exact same location because, right, the current location of the CCS1 charge port is compatible with Tesla supercharging network. And so they will add the Tesla charge port natively and that will allow you again to still use Tesla supercharging network but without the adapters. I think it's important to mention that currently the EVs that are using adapters I think within a couple years maybe like three four five years there will be so many EVs with the native NAX port overwhelmingly more than those that have adapters that a lot most people won't even realize that the adapter is out there in the wild like other vehicles, Aria owners can easily search real-time charging availability, charging status, and pay for charging all through the My Nissan app. And the enhancement to the My Nissan app simplifies EV ownership by consolidating vehicle management and public charging into one app. You'll be able to store a default payment method into the My Nissan app, so you won't have to download the Tesla app and have to, you know, start the charge. It'll just be plug and charge. You plug the Tesla plug into your adapter, the adapter into your CCS1 port, and there you go. Now you're able to charge on Tesla's supercharging network. I think this is a lot bigger news than people will make it out to be. I think this, for the Nissan Aria owner specifically, makes the Nissan Aria a much more compelling vehicle. I mean, for the price, you can get a lot more for something like an Ionic or a Model Y. This makes it a much more compelling offer, not to mention all of the lease deals we see from the Nissan Aria. But that's all for this episode, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, leave your questions down in the comments below. Happy to answer any questions you guys have. My name is Isaiah. This is the Autospec Podcast, and I'll see you guys in the next one.